My name is Professor Kenneth Dawson. I'm from the Center of BioNano Interactions in UCD in Dublin. Um, in terms of the area we work in, uh, it's a new field, and so it's a little bit difficult to sort of slot it into a simple box. But in the simplest possible terms, uh, we're studying how very, very small particles, that something about the order of a millionth of a millimeter, how these things interact with living organisms. There are two projects. One is an ITN, and it's called a Path Chooser. And there's another project, uh, which is an IAPP, which is a sort of an industry-linked project, which is actually called Pathfinder. Um, both of these refer to trying to find pathways that nanoparticles can travel along and find their right location, so to speak, as I had alluded to earlier. In the um, ITN, the aim is to train this small cadre of about 10 young researchers in these new methods of thinking and doing in terms of nanoparticle, all the way from synthesizing nanoparticles, all the way through their evaluation and sort of application in medically related topics. The industry-related project, uh, Pathfinder, is with a small Swedish company, Atana. It's, um, it's really a little university company that's begun to move out of the university environment. I've known about Marie Curie actions forever. Um, I've been in this game for a while and I've always liked them. The Marie Curie actions are um, quite special amongst the, if you like, collection of uh, framework program, as they were known, actions and divisions. Um, firstly, it's called bottom-up. What that means is that the scientists and the researchers choose the topic that they study, and that's a unique opportunity for them. But actually, to me, that's not the fundamental point about the Marie Curie action. The fundamental point is that it's so simple and so clear what the objectives are. And it almost comes back to the original vision of uh, the teacher and the student. Marie Curie actions are all about training and the student. Now, of course, the research has to be excellent, or else you can't train a student well. But it's very much about that relationship again that very special personal relationship that evolves between the professor and the student, following that student through all of the uh, challenges, the delights, the disappointments that constitutes a PhD. And then at the end, I suppose, uh, they become part of your life far beyond. So the Marie Curie programs <laughs> miraculously fund this. That's exactly what we want to do. In each of these programs, one finds partners in different ways. In the Marie Curie one, uh, this is quite the, the, what I will describe as quite typical because of the nature of the program. We were all at a conference together. Uh, we sat and listened to our own talks, and then we sat and listened to everybody else's talks. And we were sitting around in the evening, talking together, and we're saying, there's something wrong here. Um, we're not, you know, communicating across certain divisions. Our students aren't communicating across these divisions. So at that, that evening, we decided to go for the program. I think um, having industry in these Marie Curie relationships can be really helpful, both in the training networks and in the more focused programs that were in FP7 called IAPP. Um, there are multiple benefits to both or to all parties, in fact, and I've seen those through the progression of FP6, 7, and so forth. One is that uh, where students are working successfully in an area of close interest to a company, they're gone. <laughs> The job, <laughs> the perfect job, the perfect thing. So that's great. That's uh, um, a great way for the student 
Is they get a good job? And it's great for the company because the recruitment exercises happen smoothly over a period of a few years and they know exactly who they have. I think this is really um, one benefit. Um, another area I would like to stress in terms of uh, small company relationships in these uh, Marie Curie programs is that they're relatively easy for the small company uh, to use. Relatively easy. Um, there aren't many overheads uh, of complicated administration and so forth. Again, students are paid, uh, young researchers are paid to do certain things. They can spend extensive periods of time uh, in the small company. And in fact, people from the small company can spend extensive periods of time in the university. And I think that can work really well with small innovative companies. I mean, I think it can work well for everybody in industry. But what I've seen quite nicely successful is these small companies that are in the transition between really just being university companies and being really successful outside in that valley of death experience. And they're they have this period where they are developing as a company, but they have young researchers and academics getting becoming aware of their tools, their new inventions, going all over the world, showing the research data, showing how this instrument or this discovery of this small company is being used. And I think it's a very powerful, uh, if nothing else, a very powerful public relations exercise for the company. And I've really begun to see how it works in this particular IAPP that we've been um, exploring. I've had a significant relationship to Marie Curie programs over the years, and I think without exception I can say they've all been really pleasant experiences for both the teachers and for the students. And they've essentially all been problem-free. Um, Unlike, you know, sometimes there are difficulties one has to solve in large research programs, which we also run. Um, we've had lovely things happen over the years. Uh, one I can still see in my mind's eye is one of the students in one program receiving from the hands of the then Italian president a prize for work that was done within that training network. I think it's also sort of important to stress that Marie Curie programs and the students within them tend to maintain relationships through the years and those relationships continue. And so one sees many highlights after the program. I don't know if that's uh, as well understood maybe by people at the beginning of programs than it could be, but you tend to see you see everything that happens with these students. You see when they win a big prize in Switzerland, as for example one of our students did several years ago, when they become distinguished professors in later years, when they get married, when they have children. It becomes a kind of a, a family experience. Again, I would come back to the fact that the Marie Curie program is a, a relatively simple clear structure, um, easily managed if you want to be a coordinator, very few complex issues. Marie Curie actions, um, where it, it's really very simple, very concise, very elegant. Uh, I recommend it. And I, I particularly recommend it for young academics because it it sort of allows you to grow your roots in a very natural way in the university context. Again, a few young students working closely with them, building that intimate relationship and having ample funds, that's important, to do all the things that those students should do, including uh, not just training and research, but also allowing them to explore a little bit of the world around them. For example, our students uh, take courses on ethics. Um, they've been to secondary schools talking about how important science is. Um, they've been to lots of specialist meetings, for example, and research. 
And so they're, you know, they're, they're reasonably well-funded to allow students to, and their teachers to, to do exactly what they want.